Hey everyone and welcome to the Daily Word. I'm, I'm really glad that you've joined me and for our Daily Word we're going to go into Matthew 18 and I'd like to share verse 35 with you and, and have us talk just for a few minutes today about what it means to forgive from the heart. Jesus says, that's what my Heavenly Father will do to you if you refuse to forgive your brothers and sisters from your heart. So Peter here has asked Jesus, okay, how many times do I have to forgive? Just give me a number. And the discussion apparently in that day uh, kind of centered around the, the number seven. That, that kind of seemed like a, a reasonable number. That if somebody uh, somehow trespasses against you, uh, that uh, you'd forgive them once, twice, three times, and so forth, up to seven. And that that actually seemed like a pretty gracious number. And so you'd kind of keep track and then you get to the end of that seven and that's, uh, that's it. And Jesus says uh, seven times 70, not seven, but seven times 70. And essentially this is an instruction to not keep count, that that's actually not what this is about. And I, I'd like to just kind of as an aside, uh, just share with you one of the things I felt like God spoke to my heart about here is that the fact that Jesus is teaching us not to keep count is a pretty good indication that God doesn't keep count. As a matter of fact, the scripture tells us that by the grace of Jesus, God has chosen to not remember our sins at all anymore, that He keeps no record of wrong. And in fact, He, keeps, he, he invites us to also, by His same love, keep no record uh, of wrong. Because you see, um, keeping a, a record and counting down, okay, you got one more left and so forth, that, um, that's actually an indication of a heart that is oriented toward the self. How is this impacting me? And how many times do, do I actually have to forgive? What am I required to do, God? Just tell me what I have to do in terms of this person that has offended me, and, and I'll do just that. But the story that Jesus tells here, the parable of this king, is the story of, of a man, the king, who pays an enormous price. It costs him a massive amount of wealth to forgive this man and to forgive him this debt that he could not possibly pay. And he does that because he has pity for the man. His heart is moved in pity and compassion for him, something happens in his heart that causes him to forgive. But that same servant, as he goes out, he meets someone who owes him a relatively small amount, and he will not release him from that debt. He demands payment, and he demands payment immediately. And this, of course, is an indication that his heart is still hard. His heart is still oriented toward himself. His only concern is how he is affected. And so what we're seeing then is that when Jesus says to forgive from the heart, it is from a heart that has been transformed. Uh, God speaks through the prophet Ezekiel and says that, that in, in this new covenant that God is going to remove our heart of stone and, and give us a heart of flesh. He's going to give us a heart for the love of God and the love of man. He's going to give us a heart of, of compassion, a, a heart of, of mercy. And so as we're transformed by Jesus Christ, our hearts are less and less oriented toward ourselves and more and more oriented toward Him and toward others to the extent that not only are we willing to forgive those who offend us, but that as we grow in Christ, we would pray for them. And at first, maybe reluctantly, but we still do it. But God continues to change our hearts to the point where we actually, we, we long for them to come to repentance. We long for them to know God. We, we desire their, uh, their good. And I, I do want to be clear here that and I think this is important, particularly in abusive situations, that um, forgiveness and trusting someone, not the same thing. That forgiveness and maintaining the same relationship, not the same thing. 
that there are consequences to sin that are separate and apart from forgiveness. That God doesn't require anybody to be anybody else's punching bag. That we, we may well release someone from any sort of desire for retribution, any sort of sense of right that we have, entitlement to retribution. And yet, a relationship is ended, and yet there's a boundary that is, is lifted up, even as we continue to pray for that person and love them, doesn't mean that they're going to occupy the same place in uh, our lives. And so, uh, brothers and sisters, let's, let's pray for one another, and, and let's pray that God would continue to give us more and more of His heart, that as we as we do go through this life where we're imperfect, others are imperfect, where we're, we're bumping into each other in our brokenness and we're offending one another and so forth, that we would have a heart for others, that we would be willing to, to absorb that cost of forgiving someone because Jesus has paid such a uh, such an, uh, just an unimaginable cost for us so that we could be forgiven. And may it be so in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And Friends, I, I want you to know that until we get a chance to speak again, I pray that God would bless you and that He would keep you.